Same thing with the cowbell. Sometimes I can literally hear the difference between one drummer to the next, particularly in the, in the 50s when they were taking more liberties with it. You can really hear the swing of the bell. It's really a, an, an important aspect of it. So as Carlos demonstrated, that kind of um, goes together with the bongo bell. The bell is really pull, pulling everything together. Uh, a lot of times the bell, the, the, the bell that he would be playing in a dance situation is going to have its own mic. That's how important that is. Mm -hmm. This is kind of pushing the rhythm along, but the band is really cued in on, on that bell. That's the backbeat of, uh, of, a, of a Cuban band, a dance band, is the bell. It's, the, it's holding everything together. Um, so what I want to do now is take these rhythms, and we'll combine them a bit, uh, and we'll start off, uh, we'll start off with the Cascada pattern, and Cato will play uh, the bongo, and uh, Stan is, is playing, I guess I kind of overlooked a little bit what Stan has changed from the original rumba to what's considered uh, kind of home base for, for, uh, for congas now, it's called the tumbao, or groove. Um, it's more of a straight pulse, uh, and, and uh, it kind of got developed during the time of when Son was adding the Congo pattern uh, into um, the music. So go ahead and play it tumbao. So everybody here has done that on the drum set. We're playing. Where that came from, we, that 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 rhythm is exactly where drum set players have stolen that da boom boom da boom boom over and over again. And if you hear any variations of that, if you if you ever go hear John Van Olen on the Wednesday night with the big band and they do a Latin thing, he'll use multiple toms to play that pattern, and it's the multiple pattern that he's getting is basically just the fact that there are more than one conga drum, and you can put that pattern into many many melodic uh, concepts. So give him a little bit. Of <laughs> just me by myself, I could go ahead and, and, and start doing that around the drums. Uh, all of these patterns that I'm playing, I would just simply play uh, as I've been doing here, but then I'm just going to add the left hand part uh, in any combination of that melodic content that I could. Um, but since most of the time I'm playing with a combo player, I try to stay out of his way uh, to, to not over overcome that or you know play on top of him it's not really necessary for me to do that if there's a combo player there if I want to create like some excitement and energy and really fatten up the, the groove I can smack a couple drums here and there but for the most part I I don't add that pattern in um, okay so back to what we'll do here we'll do the cascara pattern and then at one point I'll go up to uh, this the mambo pattern uh, and then at that point, to add the wheel a little bit as I hear it. Okay, that's cool. And then you'll eventually hear him go to the the, the campana, the bell part, and you'll hear how it all fits together. And you'll see there's a lot of freedom within this context of these sounds here that uh, that you can play with. And I'll, I may even uh, try to get a little bit more contemporary. I might try to put a little bit of funk. Nowadays, drummers in Cuba are actually playing drum set and timbal at the same time. So these patterns have developed to where they're playing really little miniature melodic patterns with the timbali and the conga, or I mean, in the, in, the, in the cowbells that go with it. And then they're really playing funk patterns mm -hmm. um, on the drum set. And it, it's just a huge sound. It's a huge sound. Uh, hearing a modern Cuban dance band is like standing in front of a freight train. I mean, the rhythms are just coming at you. And, and, and nowadays, even the piano player and the bass player, they're doing these polyrhythmic things, and it's... Mm -hmm. It's pretty intense, um, so we'll, we'll, I'll try to get a little bit of, of that maybe if I feel inspired. So, all right, so we go one, two, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
percussion section playing basic. I mean, that's, you know, we weren't really overplaying. Uh, that would be a very standard way to play. So if you're like me and you like to play a lot of notes, this music really <laughs> kind of uh, allows you to do so. Um, all right, so that's really developing. Those are all, these are all the rhythms that are happening. Uh, but there's a lot of other things happening on the island of Cuba as well. There's a, a rhythm that was created called a cha-cha-cha. And uh, this rhythm is, you know, without this rhythm, no one would know who Carlos Santana is because it was really, it's a really uh, easy to put to rock, rock song. So it, um, it kind of developed from the dance song groups. Um, uh, I guess that uh, right around the time that song was being developed, the 19, early 1900s, cha-cha. Uh, they added, uh, they added the song, the cha-cha-cha, after the cha-cha was created. Okay, so like 30s, yeah, 50s, 40s? 50s. 50s. Okay, 50s. So what happened was the timbali player in uh, the danzon orchestras added a small cowbell. And it's a very uh, straightforward rhythm. That's why it's adaptable to rock really well. It's a really simple thing. Uh, you're just going to clock out quarter notes on the high note. This is, you've probably all heard this before. The Congo part is still plays that, that tumbao, that dungu, chaka, dungu, dung, dung, dungu, chaka, dungu, dung, dung. Um, and then what you have is the wiro, which is really going to propel everything. So that's another part where the wiro part is really important. Um, and then to, even today, you'll see rock, Latin rock bands, they always have a wiro player. The lead singer is playing wiro or something. It's still to this day very popular. So let's give them a, uh, an idea. And again, I'm going to play the, um, the uh, and of two. Uh, on the bass drum, and then of course I can also do the four, which is very common too. So you'll hear one, four, one, two, three, four. That's a very common bass drum pattern, which is really going to fall in line with the bass part. Um, the bass guitar is playing that rhythm as well. In a rock setting, they're going to play the one and in the four. You'll hear more of a. That's because the rock musicians they tend to want they they want to hear that one. So they'll, they'll put that in. Um, so let's try that. So uh, one, uh, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Now, there's cool things that you could do. A lot of times, particularly in a rock situation, you don't have this other part. It's just you, you're the only drummer there. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do to put all of that out to the one drum set. One of the things I like to do is I'll put the weirdo part on the hi-hat by slashing. If I don't have a congo player, then I may do the... If I do have a congo player, then that frees me up to uh, to play a little bit of uh, backbeat in a different context. So I can even give it more of a halftime feel. San Francisco's drummer, great drummer named David Flores. Um, I stole this directly from him. He, he takes the wheel for like, if, if you're in a jazz situation, or, or if the, the rock gig you're on or whatever, the volume drops down, you can imitate the wheel by playing it like this. And at that point, since the volume is down, I'm gonna play the cowbell part here, keep the bass drum going. And this is the lower volume version of the chata. So it's really, really cool the way that everything kind of is, uh, fits onto the drum set. Um, another important aspect of uh, the cha-cha, as well as just any of the other things we've done, 
is a, a classic fill called the abonico, which is basically just means fan. Um, but they're talking about the old kind of fan where you would open it up and then you know, fan yourself. That sound is uh, a very common fill that's played. It's just a roll. It can be played with one stick, which Cotto does on a timbale extremely well. I can't do that well. Uh, and it just sets up, um, it's a very typical way to set up a cha-cha or any other rhythm. So I'll kind of do that now. Um, and it, it too also has um, clave direction. So if I'm playing um, a cha-cha that's really got a two, three feel, so it's one, two, three, four, one, and two, I'm going to pop the end of two and then roll uh, on the four. One, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, three, four, right, to get into it. If it's on the three side, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, four, then I'm going to pop the three. If you do it the other way, immediately people are going to feel it's just not right. You know, it's it's that specific. You have to be that specific when you're playing things. So um, so yeah. So let's go ahead and play uh, a little bit cha 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 with that uh, introduction. One two uh, one two. The, that in the beginning of a tune, you also hear it within the framework of the song. It's set, it'll set up a different section. Uh, you'll hear that a lot. Maybe it's going from the verse to the chorus, or from one solo to the next, or from the end of a solo back to uh, a verse, or whatever part of the song you're in. So, very common thing to do. <laughs> 